Hi, welcome to 510. Come on in and take your ease. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at 510, and I really should be doing something outside, but since the light is good, I thought I'd take you for a tour inside. When you enter 510, the first thing that really catches your eye is the woodwork. And that was probably the thing that made us fall in love with the house right off the bat because in its 105 year history, this woodwork was never painted. It is as you see it now. The floors were in really bad shape. In fact, the varnish was almost completely off them. So those we redid last year. You'll notice our wood stove. This is a new catalytic type arrangement where when you have a fire going in it, you'll hardly see any smoke, if any, coming out of the chimney. It burns really completely. And when the chimney sweeps come, really all they remove is ash. There's no creosote or anything to really incur the risk of a chimney fire, which is neat. We were able to put this in because we replaced both our furnace and our water heater that used the chimney with the new modern type that actually piped the exhaust out through a very large PVC pipe out the side of the house. That freed the chimney up so that we could tie this wood stove into it. And it's really made a significant impact on our heating bills. And with our small woods out back and all the just the branches alone that come down during the winter, plus a few trees we've had to cut down and things, we have an almost unlimited supply of wood. This is our den, and the pile of red fabric on the sofa makes one thing very clear. This is not a museum. We live in our house, and there's always something going on. In this case, Ruth was swapping out the, the covers on the living room sofa. If you look closely on the floor, you'll be able to see that the floorboards on the left are relatively continuous while there's been some piecing done on the right. That's because originally there was actually a small door into the family room and it was enlarged into the present archway. 510 has a number of construction details that make it interesting, such as the square window with wide shelf here that you can put sun catchers and things on. Also, because our two children are artists, there are a variety of artifacts around the house, such as this one called Shelter. And it has quite a story of its own that I'll have to tell another time. In an interesting juxtaposition, you have our 1978 stereo system next to our 2010 television. Now let's go through the back hallway. and into the kitchen which I featured in other videos. The interesting thing about this kitchen is it appears to be a kind of a large farmer kitchen but that's now not how it was built at all. Before the former owner remodeled it in 1994 this was actually a series of smaller rooms. This corner over here was actually a laundry room and the kitchen was largely to this side and the nook that you see kind of behind me was a breakfast nook with a built-in table and chairs. Right here was another chimney that no longer sticks out of the roof. It just stops up in the attic. That was where the cook stove hooked in. On this side there is a pantry behind this wall and my wife's workstation. But in the beginning that whole area was a much larger walk-in pantry. And now for another cool feature of this house. Behind this appliance storage area is a pass-through to the dining room. The dining room has these lovely built-in cabinets. And it also has a pocket door. Ta-da! All right, now we'll go upstairs. This is our room, which we completely redid in 2001, and has been furnished with antiques and reproductions. 
And this is my office, one of two rooms that does have painted woodwork in the house. It has some interesting features like this diamond window and a walk-in closet with a window. This is the blue room, which features a quilt made by my friend's grandmother, my wife's parents' waterfall bedroom set, and it also has a crib, because this is the room we usually put our grandkids up in. And there's Flammy. Here's the yellow room with its antique bed, another walk-in closet with window, and a dresser from the 1800s. Gabe has allocated this closet as his own. He calls it his nest, and he keeps a lot of his treasures in here, including the treasure chest at the bottom that I made for him a couple Christmases ago. The upstairs hallway features another antique dresser, and since Ruth and I are avid readers, it doubles as a library filled with several bookcases. The hallway extends the length of the house, and it has a door that opens up onto the front porch. This was all by design. In those days when there was not air conditioning, this actually allowed air to flow through the house. And you may have also noticed how each of the bedrooms had two windows in it for ventilation too. And now for one of the mysterious features of our house. Notice the change in pitch as I tap on this wall. Very solid. That's where the bricks of the chimney are. And hollow. But how can it be hollow? There's no room there. If we go on the, in the closet on the other side and tap, it's all hollow. Not only that, but notice how the walls in the hallway zig and zag. And yet, all the rooms and closets on the other side are completely square. What's going on? Most of the people who owned this house throughout the 20th century were fairly well-to-do. Yet, they all lived very modest lives. What happened to all their money? The wall knows. And perhaps it's in the cavity here. Originally, this area upstairs was just a hallway or perhaps a storage area. And then at some point in the past, it was turned into a half bath, and the wall was where I'm standing now. We pushed that wall out into my office and added a surround shower. In comic strips and old movies, you often see these huge old attics just loaded with all kinds of stuff. And ours is no exception in that respect. The only thing we really lack is the ubiquitous dress dummy. This is one of my favorite paintings in the house. It's a self-portrait of our son Nate. And the writing on his book says, Happiness is not a fish that you can catch. And no hundred-year-old house would be complete without a leaky, musty, dark, scary cellar. This is the root cellar part of our house. Here's my workshop. And the laundry room beyond. Once the house had a massive coal furnace, which was round, you can faintly see its outline that it fills the whole picture here. And the last cool feature, this door, which has a stairway that leads outside. So that's our tour of the inside of 510. Should you be a robber and using this video as a basis for robbing our house, please note that the only thing we have that's really worth anything is our television. Everything else is old and outdated, including me.